Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's Hunt. Today, I'm going to be teaching y'all how to become an elite shooter in NBA 2K23. We're going to be going over the best jump shots for each position, guard, lock, and for actual centers and poppers and stuff like that. On top of that, we're going to be going over the best shot timing. We're going to be going over badges, and I'm going to be giving y'all some actual tips on how you can make more shots on this game. Make sure y'all drop a like, sub, turn on post notifications. It's all very much appreciated. And without wasting no time, let's get straight into it. Now we're going to go ahead and get all the easy stuff out the way first. So let's start off and go over the jump shots. I'm going to pop up the jump shot that I use on my 6-1 guard. This is good for 6-5s and under. It's a very good jump shot all A's around. This is the perfect jump shot for small guards. Now I have an ISO lockdown. So this jump shot is good for lockdowns and for tall guards. This is my Kyle Kuzma based jump shot. I love this jump shot. This is the jump shot if I was to play on a wager on my tall guard with, which is 6'7", by the way. This jump shot is good for 6'5 through 6'10". If I was to play a wager on my ISO lock, this is the jump shot I'm throwing on. Now, I do have an alternative jump shot for my 6'7 ISO lock. I'm going to pop that up on the screen. This jump shot is a lot easier to time. This is a jump shot if I'm just going to park or I'm just playing around and having fun with my friends, you know, not really trying to take the game serious, don't care about focusing. This is the jump shot I put on because just for some reason, this jump shot is just so easy to time. If you're somebody who struggles with shooting, put this on and I'm telling you, it's easy to time. Like, it's so easy to actually time this jumper. It's so fluid and like, it just looks so smooth like a regular jump shot, man. It's easy to time. That's all I can really say about that. Now for poppers, I do not own a popper slash center build, but I run with a popper on a daily basis, so I'm going to put his jump shot up on the screen. I play with him like every single day. It's my duo Slurpee, y'all already know, and he's very chicken, man. He hits a lot of his shots, and I could vouch for this jump shot and say this is a very good jump shot. Now that we got the jump shots out the way, let's quickly talk about shot timing. I use late, but it does not matter what you use. I'm going to tell y'all this real quick. The only thing that shot timing affects is how long your button, how long your finger is on the square button. Now, it doesn't affect the actual speed of the jump shot. That's something I even thought at the beginning of the year. A lot of people thought it is not true. If you put on very late and very early and you go into the pro am you go and test it i've proved this and posted videos on this time and time after it will not change the actual speed of your jump shot you might be letting go of square quicker but the whole entire jump shot plays out the way it normally would because whatever you set your speed to in the jump shot crater one force three force two force four force that is the actual speed of your jumper the only thing that shot timing affects is the cue of where you release it at and how long your finger is on square. So that's it's all personal preference. Don't go changing it every single day because it doesn't actually affect. Like if you put very early on thinking that you're going to get open more because it makes your jump shot faster. It's not true at all. The only thing it's going to do is let you take your finger off a of square a lot earlier than the other ones would. So practice, learn which one's best for you and which one's easiest for you and stick with it because switching it and all this other stuff, it don't matter, man. Just find what's good for you and rock with it. Now, when it comes to badges, I'm gonna pop the badges I use up on the screen. These are not finished badges. As y'all can see, I do not have a core. I'm working on core in agent threes. And once I hit 40 and get the core pattern, I'm gonna add another core into shooting. So then I'll have two cores in shooting. So the way that I'm going to have it, I'm going to have Agent 3 Silver, Limitless Silver, and Dead Eye Silver. Then all the other badges that you're seeing on the screen right now. And the thing y'all are probably going to ask, why do I have all silver badges? I feel like silver is the wave when it comes to shooting. I feel like you just want to stack the badges that you're going to use. Because there's a lot of good badges that have very good purposes like catch and shoot that would change your catch animations and make things so much easier for you as a catch and shooter and space crater makes a difference there's a lot of badges that really make a difference so I don't think it's like last year where you want to go all out and have two hall of fame four hall of fame badges and just no other badges I feel like stacking a bunch of silver badges that go to your play style are a lot better so 
that's the best advice I could give you for shoeing badges. Look at the actual badges on the screen. See what badges you use and stack a bunch of them together. And now I guess we're just going to get into the tips on how to shoot better. I'm going to do this real quick because I feel like shooting is hard, but it's easy when you get the hang of it. Now, what I did, play career on Hall of Fame. Once you get your badges and you're ready to hit the park, you're ready to start going to park, play career on Hall of Fame before so then you can understand how the timing is, what shots they'll let you hit. Because if you go from career on rookie to park, you're probably going to think it's impossible to shoot because the shot selection is not the same. So that's one thing I could say is just play my career Hall of Fame so you can get the timing and really get down how to shoot on the hard difficulty. And then... After that, it's really just learning the timings. Once you learn how to shoot with, you know what I'm saying, how to actually just shoot in general, you know, if you're playing my career on Hall of Fame, it's going to give you a pretty good estimate, like pretty good what to expect for park. But once you get to park, we already know there's a lot of different timings. So the best thing I could say is just memorize the main timings. If someone's closer to you, it's going to make your jump shot faster. If you're wide open, it's going to be the regular speed. If you're taking a fade, it's going to be a different speed. Step back is going to be a different speed. There's a lot of different speeds. If your stamina is low, your jump shot's going to slow down. There's a lot of different speeds. And once you learn that and you start taking that into your mind, like, okay, I got low stamina now. I'm about to shoot it. It's going to be a little bit slower. But as long as I release it a little bit later, it should be green. As long as you know when you actually learn those timings, you should be doing a lot better. So it's really just playing games, shooting. If you're not having a good time shooting in park, you're going one for seven, one for eight, one for 10. Just go back to career, play that career on Hall of Fame, get the timings down, master your shot, go back to park, try it out again, and y'all should be good. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section. I'm always free to answer any questions y'all have. And until the next time, your boy Han is out. I hope y'all enjoyed today's video and I hope it helped y'all. Make sure y'all let me know if this helps y'all in the comment section.